Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. My name is Sheldon and today we're going to do something a little bit different. So a few people have asked me before about kind of what I buy because obviously I do all these videos on auctions and I talk a lot about violins and other things and I do occasionally buy stuff either from auction or from private sellers or you know Facebook marketplace or whatever etc that kind of stuff. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea just to kind of showcase some of the things that I buy. Now I usually just buy stuff kind of out of curiosity it's not necessarily I'm not looking for anything in particular I mean obviously it'd be nice to find like really nice rare old violins or 18th century violins but it doesn't always happen I am quite interested in kind of English stuff as well and amateur things uh, so I'll just kind of show you a bit of uh, you know what I pick up really um, so first of all just to say that um, I will call these videos the violin acquisition syndrome because I definitely do have a problem and I do like to kind of buy things and more out of curiosity than anything and also because if you collect guitars then you'll know about gas about the guitar acquisition syndrome so this is the violin version of this um, so yeah like I said I buy random things there's not really any particular logic to it I might think it looks interesting or I might think it's old or I might like the wood I might just be kind of curious as long as it's not too crazy expensive or as long as I find it interesting then I might kind of buy it that's it and I don't always keep everything like sometimes I keep things for a little bit and then I decide actually I want to get rid of this and get something else other times I might keep it and try and get something restored or I might just keep it at the back of the box for like a, a long time there's really no kind of specific kind of logic to it so in this kind of series of videos of which this is the first one I'm just going to kind of show you some instruments that I bought um, or I'm going to show you one at a time and tell you what I think about it about the workmanship about what needs to be done to it and then I'll also kind of skip to a video where I kind of a bit more of a close-up on the uh, actual instrument itself and then I'll just be able to kind of uh, show you the different kind of parts of it so that is the idea and also have some pictures uh, on the side so you can see like the main front and the back of uh, the instrument really um, so starting off with this one here, uh, hopefully you can kind of see it quite well. It's an interesting uh, English instrument with this quite striking kind of bird's eye uh, maple on the back, also a bit on the sides and also I think on the scroll. So this particular instrument, and I think the label is kind of correct, is by Frank Wilde and it was made in Garston, which is... Uh, kind of in the Liverpool area in 1934 and this is labelled number 13 so what I've been able to deduce about Frank Wilde is that he was probably like an amateur maker um, but like you know at this point probably an experienced amateur if he's already on number 13 uh, I've looked at some things online and you do see a few kind of instruments by him for sale and auction and stuff so he definitely seemed to have made quite a few things uh, in general the workmanship I think it's actually not bad I mean obviously at this point he's on 13 and I think when I looked at some of the earlier numbers the date was like quite a bit before that so maybe even like nine, uh, 1918 or something so I think by this point he'd been doing it on and off for a good 20 years or so so he's definitely had some experience um, yeah it shows like someone that's definitely made a few instruments but perhaps isn't completely um, kind of experienced to maybe say a professional level that might sound like a little bit kind of harsh but if you see it kind of in person uh, you'll understand so I mean choice of woods and materials are actually like really beautiful it's a really nice piece of wood I mean you do get some trade instruments like this but this is kind of a higher quality uh, than a lot of the bird's eye maple and trade instruments however you do get a lot finer as well like some of the older violins there was recently in Ingalls and Heyday like a possibly a Steiner violin or kind of of that ilk which had the most incredible bird's eye uh, back really really quite fascinating uh, kind of piece of wood so but anyway a good kind of choice of wood kind of solid build weight wise it feels like a little bit heavy uh, maybe quite hard to see here but some of these plates they seem it's the edge work is a bit heavy here and I suspect that the plates are maybe uh, a little bit kind of heavy uh, otherwise you see here the front of the scroll this is quite 
quite blocky really i mean i actually really like it it's nice from the sides uh, but it is a little bit blocky here at the front so it's a few kind of details uh like that i mean if uh, like so i'm not a violin maker but i've been around enough violins now you can kind of tell some of the parts are uh, quite fairly nice on the back it's not too bad and like i said in the side profile i think that's quite a nice uh nice scroll it's just the front is a bit blocky but once again if you've been around violins enough you'll know that even you know some of the finest old uh, italian violins and stuff sometimes they have different kinds of scrolls and they're not all like immaculate strad scrolls or whatever you do get different types so i think this is got an individual flair to it and i i quite like it um like i said the edge works a bit heavy um varnish is i don't know it's quite nice varnish on the back but i don't think it's really kind of worked that well on the top here it's a bit uneven the uh, the kind of varnish on it obviously it's no bridge or anything so it needs to be set up and that would obviously take a bit of time and a bit of a, a cost it's not something that i would do but i would get people to do it. it does unfortunately have quite a big open crack here on the back which would also once again be a bit of a significant uh kind of amount of uh of work there so that is kind of uh unfortunate uh but it's all kind of repairable i think general kind of overall specs are uh kind of okay um yeah my main comment just being that the uh that some of these plates do seem a little bit heavy uh the only other thing to say is that you might see here that these f holes seem a bit kind of jagged and the same with the edges this sometimes happens when you're kind of cutting spruce and you're kind of going here against like the the kind of the grain depending on how you cut it and you know which knife you can get this kind of like slightly wavy kind of pattern if your knife is like following you know the the kind of the divots a bit and i think that's something which kind of indicates someone that's maybe not kind of super super kind of skilled in that kind of regard or doesn't have as much experience that uh that's something that you would probably as a professional maker take a bit more time to make this a bit bit smoother and a bit less kind of crinkly although there are some interesting violins out there some older uh one particular maker i forget the name from fusen very early maker who did do like kind of violins that were completely kind of almost crinkle cut so i forget the name now because uh, my memory is not that good uh but yeah so in general uh an interesting um violin not not badly made at all to be fair um i think it could be a bit more refined but it has charm i think if this were to be set up like i said it'd cost a bit of money to repair everything get everything set up i think it could be quite a good violin for like a fiddle player or something like that would it be good for a kind of professional in a classical sense i don't know i'm not 100 percent sure i mean the arching and everything looks kind of fine i don't think there's an issue with that but i think it might not really work uh for like a professional level but you know people could maybe adjust it a bit and maybe it could work but i definitely think it has potential for sure uh in regards as to if you know i would keep it or get work done to it uh once again i'm really not sure i mean i really like this back this is a beautiful bit of bird's eye maple and i'm do really like uh the backs and i, I quite like the varnish so i'm kind of yeah i'm in two minds about this when when i was thinking about doing this video i was like oh this is definitely a one which i'm you know i'm gonna kind of i'm gonna get rid of i'll put it in auction and that'll be it but kind of now when i look at it i'm just like oh i do really like this uh back so i'll have to have to think about that but uh anyway this is kind of uh my violin acquisition syndrome the first video um like i said i'll take another uh video um just kind of showing the the instrument um just kind of freehand so you can see kind of some of the angles and things like that and uh hopefully it's of interest like i've got many more instruments that i can show you some a lot of kind of english stuff a lot of amateur stuff some other older 18th century stuff maybe some things are a bit more interesting and i you know i kind of 
continually look for things and I say I buy things and I sometimes sell things so there should be other videos so uh, if you do like them uh, let me know um, but anyway um, appreciate it thanks a lot for watching I'm going to cut now on the video to kind of some free form uh, kind of stuff so you can just kind of get a bit more of an idea of what the instrument looks like and uh, yeah let me know in the comments um, what you think thanks a lot bye so here is the Frank Wilde violin, a bit more of a close-up, so we can see what's kind of going on. Um, yeah, here you can see like quite a nice outline, like maybe these F holes are a little bit kind of widely spaced out, but you can see here from this view that some of the edge work here, um, and also kind of round where the F holes are, it's a little bit kind of untidy, it's a little bit, seems a bit crinkle cut. Uh, some of the purfling here is a little bit kind of untidy as i say like it has interesting bits to it but it's not entirely refined this varnish it's not really amazing on the uh, on the top uh but it's not a bad kind of effort a really interesting scroll quite kind of blocky from the front but really nice from the side i think it's uh it's a really nice looking scroll and just quite neat as well from the back um i like this kind of slightly blocky scroll i think that's kind of quite quite interesting you can see here on the side that as i say in this edge work uh it's quite heavy and you can feel that in the weight of the uh of the instrument it is quite heavy uh, same here but like i said i think this might make a good violin i kind of uh it needs a bit of kind of TLC and repair. Like so this big open crack here is going to take a bit of a while. But it's a really beautiful bit of uh, bird's eye maple here. And actually the varnish on the back is really nice. It's a bit late at night here. So the light is pretty terrible. Uh, it's not really showing things. But you can see it's got quite a nice kind of uh, chatoyance uh, there. So yeah, in general the work's kind of tidy. Like I said, it's... Uh, you know an amateur maker but at this point he's made you know 13 instruments here this for 1934 and it's uh yeah i think it's i think it's definitely workable it's uh, an instrument that i think with a bit of repair and tlc could could sound okay at least for kind of maybe folk music uh for sure whether or not i will kind of do anything further with it i'm not sure but if if anyone has any information about this maker or any other kind of comments about things please let me know so obviously it needs a new bridge and parts some kind of few cracks and things here which need a bit of attention in the big crack on the back i uh, will need some probably shooting of the fingerboard or some other bits but yeah in general it's uh it's not too bad i think it's quite an interesting instrument so if you have a frank wild violin or you know of the maker or a relative or something just kind of reach out because i'll be interested to uh to hear from you so yeah that's it this is the first uh, violin acquisition uh, syndrome video so thanks a lot for watching ciao